All right, Shalom. First and foremost, want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Shimei and Shai. Want to give double honor to the apostles of great men who not do rule well. Salutations to the men of the hopeful and sincere elect. This is Brother Makazar from Trend.com. Just want to do a little edification for the elect's sake. And the name of this lesson would be Curse God and Die. The test of a righteous man. All right, and you know. The inspiration for this lesson came from Job chapter 2. You know, when Job was going through his afflictions, you know, and his wife, you know, tried to get him to, you know, basically to cast the Mosa aside. And, you know, us being in the truth, you know, that is something we go through on a regular. Because, you know, the things that we go through, you know, it weigh heavy on us. So, and usually when people... You know, under pressure, they would tend to want to, you know, come from under that pressure. It's just like if, you know, like if you have a pot of boiling water and you put your hand on it, while it, the more it keeps getting hot, you know, the more you would want to take your hand off of it. You wouldn't leave your hand there to be burnt up. All right? So, that is... You know, like being in this truth, the scriptures talk about the straight path. You know, being in position of difficulty. And the reason why we in these straight paths, as the scripture says, you know, one side is a fire, one side is a deep water, is basically to, to try us and to test us. All right? And what was happening with Job? Job was being tested. And we being tested always, as Paul said, I die daily. All right? And... This is what these spirits want us to do. Basically wants us to forsake the Mosai. And by forsaking the Lord, the Haba Hashem, or Shai, guess what? Evidently we're going to die. Alright, so this is the test of the righteous man. Alright, so this is Job chapter 2 verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Alright, so she wanted him basically like, you, you know, you still, you know, serving the Mosai? You know, Forget, forget doing, doing his will and just, and just, you know, just fall off. And the reason why I said it is the test of the righteous man. Because only the righteous man would know that, you know, when he going through any, any struggles, you know, whether it be, you know, whether anything that he going through, whether it be favorable, whether it be unfavorable, as the scriptures talk about the cup. It says one's lot, whether favorable or unfavorable. So, you know, whether you be based or abound is all by the, by the hands of the Most High. Whether you be afflicted, whether you be lifted up, it's all by the hands of the Most High. All right? The Most High controls all things. All things obey His will. And the righteous man understands. As the scripture says, I believe it's in Psalms 93, it says, The brute, um, thy ways are very deep. Thy thoughts are very deep. He said, the brutish man know it not. Neither does the sinner understand this. You know, roughly paraphrasing. So, when a two-third being afflicted, you know, they blame it on Satan, you know. And, you know, basically, they don't know. They don't understand. Pursuing to Jeremiah chapter 5 and 4, they don't understand the will, not the judgment of the Mosai. But the righteous man knows that Whatever happens in this world, it all happens by the will of the Most High. So therefore, it's easier for the righteous man to be in this position of Job, where his wife would actually say, curse the Most High and die. All right? Because no is the, whatever happens, you guess what? It happens, you know, by the will of the Most High, you know? As the scripture said, you know, from the Most High belongs the issues of death. When Job children died, they know that, hey, guess what? If the most High didn't want them to die, they wouldn't have died. So if, let's say, you are a righteous man, you know, you're pushing this truth and then your, your child dies. Guess what? If, the, if it wasn't sanctioned by the most High, you, you know, you... If it wasn't sanctioned by the most High, you know, he wouldn't have died or she wouldn't have died. All right? So you being in the know, knowing that the scripture said, blesses the man that know it and understand that this. If you... In this truth, and you understand the will of the Most High, then you would know that, hey, guess what? That was all the Most High's will. So then you'd be left in the situation where you would either, you know, mourn for your child and just continue doing the, pushing the word, or, you know, fall off. 
Just like with Ezekiel, the most I took Ezekiel wife and told him, hey, continue and push the truth. So Ezekiel had a you know a choice where he could have just you know forsook the Mosai because the Mosai took you know the apple of his eye or continue or maintain his integrity. And there's the position that the righteous man is in every day. And it's all to try us. It's all to try us to see whether we for the most high or not. <laughs> all right. It says, verse 10, it says, But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of Yahweh? And shall we not receive evil? All this did Job not stem with his lips? So he said, Hey, we're going to receive good and evil from the hands of the most high. Isaiah 45. Mosai doing good and evil. So wherever thing happened, know that it was sanctioned by the Mosai. Nothing happens without the Mosai giving the authority. Alright? Let's say, you know, you you walking and you bounce your head. You know that, hey, it's hey, something that you did. Alright? You probably, you know, was having a booming business, then boom, your business collapse and all things go into shambles and shit, shit. You know, the Mosai gave it to you and as the job said, you know, he took it away. So the, what would you do? What, would you just stop serving the Mosai because you 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 stop prospering or you you, you suffer that great loss? No, you continue serving the Lord. You continue serving the Lord, and there's the test of the righteous man to see whether your heart is for the Lord Yahweh Hashem Shai or not. And those spirits, as the script, the scripture calls Satan, what the tempter. All right. This is Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Then how shall I let up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil? So the spirit led how shall I to be tempted? Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. Then was how shall I led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil? how shall I was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tried. Then the scripture said his disciple is not above his master. If the Lord was tempted, a, eh, so, so will we. So will we. Yahweh was proved. And we also had to be proved. Alright? That is the test of the righteous man. To be, you know, to, that is the life of the righteous man. Alright? To be proved. Alright? To see whether you fully more sir or not. You say you fully more sir. Alright, so then guess what? As the scripture said in the wisdom of Solomon, it said, Let us try him. If he right, if the just man is the son of the Mosai, you know, he will save him. So if 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 the Mosai is 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 truly, you know, your God and your fear, then guess what? You gonna maintain your integrity for the Lord when you're under fire. Just like when you're in the concentration camps and, and death. Pressing and you seen, you know, seeing, you know, your death coming. You, it, it, you know, that would be your, your time of being tried to see whether you will serve the most high unto your, unto your dying breath. All right. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Then was Yahweh Shai led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter, all right, the tempter came to him. He said, If thou be the son of Yahweh, command these stones to be made bread. <laughs> but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of Yahweh. So, what Yahweh Shai did, Yahweh Shai maintained his integrity, and his main integrity is what? Holding fast to the scriptures. So you had to be in the scriptures so that when you're being tried, these words of the Most High, as the scripture said, tried seven times. The pure words of the Most High could be reverberating in your mind so you will know how to respond to those spirits, you know, when they come at you. Because they will come at you as basically as it's, it's your own thought. All right? That's how those spirits work. They come at you as, as a thought. They instill thoughts into your head. All right? So you use the scriptures to counteract them and not your own words. All right? It says, Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the son of Yahweh, cast thyself down, for it is written, 
he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. So guess what? Even the devil knows scripture. So he's going to use scriptures to you. That is why sometimes when you're in situations, you know, you be looking for loopholes. That's how the spirit is working. You know, like, you know, you, you know what you're going to do is wrong, but you're trying to find a loophole where you can escape and do what you have to do. But guess what? There's no loopholes in the laws. And it's not you that looking for the loopholes, but those spirits trying to make you believe there's a loophole. So they use scriptures to counteract the scriptures that you use in your mind. But you have to remember, hey, the scripture said, um, at the at the, the end of the end of sin is what is death. So you just have to remember that. Alright. It says, He says, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou should dash thy foot against a stone Yahweh Shai said unto him it is written again thou shall not tempt Yahweh thy God and the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and it's the same thing that was happening with Job Satan took all the, the riches and glory that Job had just to see if Job will sin against the Lord. And it's the same thing where he was doing here to Yahweh Shai, basically the reverse. Basically, he was tempting Yahweh Shai to see if Yahweh Shai would be for the Lord or not. Alright? Basically, he wanted Yahweh Shai to curse the Most High. And that, is, that was Yahweh Shai's test. And he passed it with flying colors. And said unto him, All these will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Yahweh Shai unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship Yahweh thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leadeth him, leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And guess what? The scripture said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them all. Alright? So you just have to maintain your integrity for the most high. Alright? Because that is your test and we're going to be tested constantly until we be in the kingdom. Just remember that Paul said we die daily. Our test never ends. The scripture said my strength, my grace is known in, my strength is known in weakness. My grace is sufficient for thee. Alright? So as being a righteous man, guess what? We're going to be tried. Those spirits are going to try us. They're going to come at us and they're going to try to get us to curse the Most High. But we have to remain strong. We have to remain strong. This is um, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you, as though some strange things happen unto you. Alright, some strange thing might happen. Alright, you might, you know, buy a new car and you drive, you know, from the, from the dealership or wherever you, you know, you bought the car and then bam, you know, you know, somebody crashed into you. It's like, but but before you bought that car, you know, you know, your wife left you in the morning with your kids, you know, and, you know, you probably lost your job. Alright, and you say, you know what, let me just do something to take away, you know, that bad vibe or take my mind off of that pressure that happened earlier on. So you went and bought this car and then boom, it crashed and then it's like, you know, you're thinking that, you know, the whole world against you and you knowing, you, you've been in the truth knowing that, hey, these things ain't happening just like that. The most I allow these things. So what, what would you do? Would you curse the most I or would you, you know, bow down and, and, and beg the Lord for, for his mercy? And, for, and forgiveness or whatever you probably did. Alright? This is what you have to do. That is why the Lord asked Job, who is this that speak without wisdom? Alright? Going on, this is First Peter chapter 4, verse 13. It says, but rejoice. This is what Peter said. When in those times, rejoice. Inasmuch as you are partakers of Mashiach's suffering. Because Yahusha was also tempted. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. You may be, may be glad also with exceeding joy. Just like Yahweh Shai. Paul said, I count all these things down. So you know when you go into your head, hey, just take it patiently. Paul said what? He said, no chastisement at the first is comely. 
It's not comely at first. Nobody said it's going to be easy, but you have to bear it. Jeremiah said, woe is me for my hurt. My wound is grievous, but I must bear it. He said, if you be reproached for the name of Mashiach, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of Yahweh rested upon you. On their part he is evilly spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. Alright? It says, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. So those suffer for wrongdoings, suffer for well-doings. Alright? Suffer for well-doing. Once you're suffering, you know, because you, you know, you end this truth, you know, you're catching... You know, afflictions left and right. Don't, don't, don't give up your faith and hope in the Lord. All right, maintain it because guess what? As, as, the, as the, the three holy children and even the, the seven sons, they said, hey, we're suffering for our sins. All right? The scripture said our iniquities are withholding good things from us. The reason why we're going through all these things is because we sinned against the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, So therefore, we, this, this is what, you know, imparted unto us. But guess what? Our duty is to maintain our integrity. Maintain our integrity. The scripture said, um, his, words, his words have I kept. Alright? You have to maintain your integrity in the Lord. This is Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. It says, thou shall, and, and thou shall remember all the way which Yahweh thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thy heart. To know what was in thy heart. This is the reason why we've been tried and why we be cast down because the Lord trying to test to see what is in our hearts. Just like what he did to Job. You might think it's it, it, it harsh. You might think it weird, but look at the end of Job. Job received double. And guess what the scripture said? Such is Israel portion. For thy shame thou shalt have double. We're going to be greatly rewarded as long as we pass those tests. As long as we maintain our integrity in the Lord, Yahabah, Hashem, Yahashai, and falter not. In the scripture says, the just man falleth seven times. But guess what? It is falling is not the important part. Rising is. It's to, it's to get back up on your feet and continue going. Remember Ezekiel. Ezekiel continued pushing the truth after the Mosai took his wife. You might lose things in this truth. You might suffer in this truth. But don't let none of those things make you stop serving the Lord. Or as the, as the title says and as the scripture says, curse God and die. Don't ever you know, lose your faith in the Lord. Don't ever lose the, your faith in Yahweh Shai. Alright? It says... To humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And that is the reason why the Lord tries us to see whether our heart is for him or not. You say you love Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushai. Has thou faith? Have it to thyself before Yahweh. Happy is the man that condemneth not himself anything which he alloweth. Alright? So if your heart is for the Lord, then guess what? The Lord, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahushai, he is going to prove it. He is going to prove it. All right. This is First Corinthians chapter eleven and verse thirty-one. It says, "For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged by maintaining our integrity. But when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord. Because why? Because we sin against Him, so we're being chastised." And it says if we judge ourselves, how could you judge yourself if you don't know what judgment is and don't know what to judge yourself by? You judge yourself because you know the scriptures and you know the will of the Most High. Hence the reason the lot of the righteous man is to be chastised to see if his heart is for the Lord. Can you be punished and not know where, as the scripture said, I'm being punished and not know where of? So now when we catch in hell, as we enter into the house of the Lord, as the scripture said, then enter, then, and then and understand I as well when I entered into the house of the Lord. So now you understand. You gain understanding. All right? The scripture said wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all I get in, get understanding. So now you got wisdom and understanding. So you know the reason why you be catching, 
you know, those hell while you be going through those strange fires. All right? Because the Lord trying you. So now you know that it's not, it's not just Satan. It's the most high given, you know, the spirits, the authority to try you. So now that you already know, what will you do? Would you continue serving the Lord? Or will you curse him and go back into the world? What would you do? Which is evident death. Which is, you know, it, it, it is death. It's it going to lead to death by denying the Lord. All right? It says, but when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. That is why we're going through all these things. Now, you think you're going through hell. The scripture said he chastens us like sun, but scourges our enemies a thousand times more. So the world going to receive a greater damnation. That is why the Lord said our light affliction. Our light affliction, remember that. Uh, let me see if I could find that real quick. Um, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. It says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work it for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So just bear it. It's a light affliction. Lord, call it light. Because compared to what the world is going to endure, guess what? What we received is nothing. The punishment and the, and the, and the, the, the heartache and the wounds that we had to bear. Being in this truth is nothing compared to what the world is going to endure. And what we're going to receive, the world is not going to receive it. So all you have to do is maintain your integrity in the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, and you shall be glorified with Yahushai at the end. All right? Is the final precept here. This is Philippians chapter 1 and verse 29. It says, For unto you it is given on the behalf of Mashiach, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Mashiach, not only to believe on him, but to suffer for his sake. So remember that. We have to suffer for Yahweh Shai. Coming in this truth doesn't mean that everything going to be a okay. We're not in the kingdom yet. Contrary to what those Christians think that when you come in to this truth, everything becomes easy. The scripture said many are the afflictions of the righteous. Remember that. Understand? And it's also said the godly man shall suffer persecution. So we're going to catch hell. We are going to catch hell. But our duty is to maintain our integrity in all this hell that we're catching. Alright? So we have to suffer for the Lord. Yahabah Hashem Yahushai. Alright? So, you know, I hope it was edifying. You know, as, you know, as the scripture says, you know, in all these things, Job maintains his integrity. So that is the main thing. We have to maintain our integrity in the Lord. Alright, so with that, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahabah Hashem Yahushai. I want to give double honors to the apostles of great mercy and do rule well. Salutations to the men of the whole land, saints elect. This is your brother Makaza from a trend.com saying, Shalawam and stay strong. Shalawam.